Now, like most people's story, it begins in graduate from high school. It's the time you start thinking, what should I do with my life? I really didn't want to do anything specific, so I kind of did the first thing that came to mind, and I started a band. It seemed like a fun thing to do. We toured around, we had a lot of fun. I went through a lot of different looks. I had long blonde hair, bald hair, black hair. My personal favorite was I actually had permanent blue hair for an entire summer. It was coincidentally my mother's least favorite of any looks that I had. And it turned out the brighter my hair got, the brighter my arms got. When you can draw your own tattoos, it becomes very addicting to continuously get more and more. So I did about four years of playing in my band. I never honestly had any delusions of being a rock star. It was more or less, I didn't want to go into university right away because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And this was my something to do. It was a challenge that I accepted. And I really just went with that for about four years. And then, you know, honestly find that life has a funny way of bringing you back to reality. I got in a near-death car accident uh, out in Langley. I was turning left at Fraser Highway. And it turned out a Ford F-250 ran a red light going about 120 miles an hour and hit me straight on. Now, I don't know if anyone's ever been in a near-death car accident before, but it is scary. And it's not just the impact. It's not that you're in pain. In fact, you don't feel anything because you are injured in so many ways that you don't even have a clue what's wrong with you. And that's almost the scariest thing. And this is where your mind starts wandering. I couldn't move. I couldn't tell what was wrong with me. I could tell just by looking around that a lot of things probably were, but I wasn't sure, which meant I didn't know what was wrong, and honestly, I didn't know if I was going to live or if I was going to die. And you start thinking about things so differently as far as, am I happy with just going along, doing things, whatever, or do I wish I would have done more? And what I really found is I did feel that I had a deep down potential that I had just completely ignored. Because one of the things I realized at that moment, it's a lot easier to ignore potential and never have a chance to fail than it is to go for it. But there's really no reward, and you only have regrets from that kind of attitude. So I made a promise to myself that if I survived the car accident, spoiler alert, I did, that I would be able to just ignore excuses and just create opportunities. If I could control my own destiny, I'd be able to do whatever I wanted. So I did walk away from the accident, and I started thinking about just what I wanted to do with my life and where I could go, and I was lost. Again, I knew I didn't want to be a musician, and that's all I'd ever done. And the great opportunity for me with the car accident is when you can't move for a month, a lot of times it's think. So nothing really distracts you from thinking about what I love to do. I kept a notepad by my bed, which I always just wrote down songs and really just any planning I do for the band, and I started looking for clues to what is my passion, what do I love. As I flipped through the notepad, I started to see a little bit of a coincidence in here. An entire notepad, like 5% was based to writing songs or anything to do with that, and everything else in my notepad was based around the strategy behind the band. In fact, ever since I got good enough to play live, I stopped practicing music altogether and never really listened to it. I'd spend all my time planning how can we get more shows, how can we get exposure, what kind of merchandise can we create. I started designing the merchandise, figuring out ways to get record deals. I was organizing a tour, trying to get on the radio. And I realized when I had the opportunity, it was nothing to do with the actual band that I love to do. It was all just the planning and strategizing, and I love creative thinking. I love the idea of how can I help think someone. I started to ask around to my friends and family, and they pointed out, well, you know, one of my favorite board games was always Risk. I was almost undefeated at it. And these video games I played would always be strategy-based, and I always gravitated to this one thing, and that I love creative problems. And the more I came to it, the more I realized how clear it was that, you know, my passion, what I get excited talking about, I love creative strategy. And it just made so much sense, and so that's what I want to do. And as I tried to connect that to a career path, I realized it's not as simple as, okay, I'll be executive of creative strategy for a company. But I knew there was a direction. I knew you could be an executive who runs strategy for a major multi-million dollar company. And if that was clear enough for at least to have something that I could start moving forward to. So when I started looking at my resume again, I encountered the experience gap. I would have a tough time walking into an interview and saying, Hi, I've played in a band for the last four years and I'd like to run the strategy for your company. It just wasn't in the cards. So I realized step one, there was going to be a lot of things I needed, but education was going to be obvious. So I enrolled at Douglas College, did my diploma in uh, this administration. But again, one thing you'll find very quickly is education is great. Education is a check off the list, but education is not the main thing they're asking for a job interviews. They're looking for relevant experience. 
And again, when I looked at this, I had nothing. So I started just trying to think, there's got to be ways to create opportunities. And I started trying to identify them. One, my sister was a consultant. She has her MBA. So I asked, can I please, 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 just follow you around and work for free and take notes when you do consulting. I, it was the best way I could think to just, how can I soak up the business world? How can I learn you know, what opportunities are out there? So I worked it as a strategic consultant because I wanted to gear towards where I was going. But again, I finished this, and I realized this isn't even close to where I was going. It was such a slow pace. I was waiting for school to finish. And I really wanted to find a way to fast track everything I was doing. And there was a really cool opportunity at Royal Roads University where you can do years three and four of your degree in 11 months, which I like the idea of less school. You can come in more work. So I moved to Victoria. But again, when you look at the degree, it's just not enough to say, wow, this person is so qualified for that dream job. So I made a vow just, I would look for every single opportunity to find experience. And one of the greatest opportunities that just popped out, I think you guys had some uh, course or something by Scythe today. And Scythe was an organization that was just starting at our school. Somebody had the idea that we should bring in a Scythe chapter, we call it ACE, and was looking for someone to run it. When I asked what ACE was, they said it's an organization based on building experience for your fellow students. And I thought, that's perfect. If I ran the ACE organization, I could control every single experience that I created. And the more I mapped out everything I was missing, the easier it was. So I became the president of ACE World Roads. I recruited seven executives, had 60 volunteers, and all we did was hammer out and brainstorm how we could get the most experience and went and do it. We raised over eight grand for charity in about 30 days just by convincing other people in our school to start a small business to raise money for charity. We did micro lending to Uganda. We did consulting to various uh, various organizations, various not for profits. In a really, really short amount of time of simply getting together with a bunch of people and saying, "What do you mean for experience? How can we get that? How can we do it?" We had people who were in sustainability, and well, let's create a division around sustainability. That way, you can fill every experience you need before you get. It. And as I started looking at this, I started realizing this: the speed of creating an opportunity this is all coming together. But even for me, as I was really not, I was looking for a pretty specific thing being an executive strategy, to which I realized, well, one of the best ways to get my foot in the door would be to be in charge of the marketing department, because marketing strategy is fun strategy. So I kind of changed my step one to my main goal, to how can I be a marketing executive? And when I looked at my resume again, I thought, you know, I've gained a lot, but honestly, I have nothing to do with marketing. And this was right when I graduated, and I started thinking, there's got to be a way that I can fast track. So the simple solution was just as with a team I've created opportunities and experience before, by myself I could do the same thing. So I incorporated a company called Frankson Enterprises. And the entire goal of my company was to get paid and experience in the shortest amount of time. I honestly lost money in my first year and I didn't care because all I wanted to do was gain every single skill that I was missing and that was holding me back and do it as fast as possible. In the final two weeks of school, I, through YouTube, learned how to design websites, bought a camera, learned how to edit video. I created my own website, a portfolio called Cool in Vancouver, that was filming the best places for drinking, dining, and entertainment around Vancouver. I used that to get clients based on, here's an example of how to design a website, how to promote a website with a social media marketing strategy, and how to do video. So very quickly, I had multiple clients coming in just from that. And I got most of my experience working with charities. I worked with Trevor Linden and the Zajac Ranch for Children, which is a fabulous charity. And I just kept, in every opportunity possible, asking, how could I help? How can I get that experience? And what I found, after a year of doing my own business, all the check marks started to line up. And when I was really just dissecting, you're never looking at a resume. You're looking at transferable job skills, the skills that you do in something that apply to something else. And the further ahead I got, the more I realized that Everything really added up as far as I've done grassroots marketing and then networking, a PR experience for featuring television news on the radio. I really had a story about everything that they'd be looking for. I didn't have 20 years of experience. I didn't have 10 years of experience. I didn't even have two years of experience. But really, every single experience that they'd be looking for, every single skill, I had a story. And that was really, at least in my mindset, all I needed. So after a full year of running my company, I thought, you know, it's time to see if my theory works. And I started applying to places. And I found a really, really cool opportunity at a technology company where I work now, near Global Track. They were looking for someone to start a marketing department up from scratch, someone entrepreneurial, someone who's a continuous improver, and that was what they were saying. And I thought, well, that's perfect. 
So I applied for the job. I did a phone interview. My first phone interview was completely a book review, nothing else. It was simply what the first question that we asked at the company is what's in your continuous improvement library and what are you working on now? If someone doesn't have an answer, we simply say thank you for your time and hang up the phone. I was able to have this conversation, which got me another interview. And like when that experience gap hits, when they realized how old I actually was, through the first interview, I kind of got a little bit of a tough question. And it was simply, you're too young for this position. We have someone coming in from Toronto, twice your age, who's just won multiple marketing awards and 25 years of experience. And they were pretty set on giving the guy the job. But again, I was driven and passionate about this opportunity. So I simply said, well, with all due respect, you're wrong. I'm fully qualified for this job. And in fact, marketing is going in such a different direction that anything you learned 20 years ago is irrelevant. Anything you learned five years ago is irrelevant. If you haven't specialized in doing online video, online marketing, social media marketing, I don't think that person will be right for the company. So I said, if you give me the opportunity, let me bring my projector into the office tomorrow. I'll do a presentation on exactly why I'm qualified for this. And that whole presentation was really just going through each of these steps and just showing I had a story that was compelling for every single skill they were looking for. Which meant after the interview, they would think there was, oh yeah, well we had this candidate, that candidate, or there's that kid who got in a near death car accident, then in three years did all this, and it sticks in your head. And especially when you get rolling on experience, it's really easy to then point to someone and say, look, I've done all of this in three years, really. Think what I'll be able to do for you in the next three years. And when you're passionate, it shows. When you believe you're the right person, it shows. So the more experience you get, the more confident you get, and the more you get rolling in that direction, the easier it is to just win someone based on, I've got a feeling you're the right person. So I got this job as director of marketing, and that was my foot in the door. But again, my goal was never just to run marketing. I wanted to run strategy. I wanted to do what I love to do. And what I found really cool, the more you learn how to do what you love to do, the better you get at it. The better you are at something, the more it just makes sense that a company focuses you on the thing that you love, because you're so much more productive when you're doing what you love. So actually, shortly after I got hired, we fired our vice president and didn't replace him. Which then, over the next year, I just asked for more responsibility, more responsibility. And then pretty much just over a year from getting hired, I was upgraded to vice president of business development, which meant all my position is is really focused on the growth strategies. I have days that I sit by Rocky Point with a notepad, brainstorm the direction we should go, brainstorm our marketing strategies, brainstorm our implementation strategies, and that's what I do. It may sound incredibly dorky, but it's what I love to do. So just by getting my foot in the door, finding a growing organization, I was able to do what I love in a very short amount of time. And even just having those stops where someone says, I'm sorry, you're too young, when you have a reason that you truly believe that you are right for the job, it is so easy to convince someone. One of my favorite quotes on selling from a guy named Brian Tracy is that selling is the process of transferring enthusiasm from one person to another. And when you transfer the enthusiasm of how passionate you are for a product, it's easy to make a sale. When you're doing a job interview, you are the product. So when you're passionate about what you're doing, you're passionate about your own skill, and you believe you're right, you're simply making a sale. And honestly, life is sales, and the better you get at it, the easier it is to get ahead. 